All right, welcome everybody. This is a workshop to talk about the legalization of not marijuana because it's already legalized in the state of New York by the governor back in March, but on the laws in terms of the process for dispensaries and our lounges in the village of Rhinebeck, only for in the village of Rhinebeck. Um, so it is a workshop. It is meant to get community involvement, you know, discussion, you know, that interchange of information and ideas and et cetera. It's not for us to stand up here and proliferate, right? It's our, it's really what we want to do is get input from all of you going forward. So just I want to summarize just a little bit again. Welcome uh, to this workshop. This is number two. We had a previous workshop on the 27th on July 27th as well on this topic. Um, so just as a reminder, the village, state of New York has legalized marijuana for consumption and in the state of New York. So and there's a lot of things that we don't have control over. We don't have control over the licensing. We don't have control over the enforcement. We don't have control over, you know, where, you know, if they want to, they can smoke weed anywhere they can smoke a cigarette and it's legal. So we, those kind of issues we don't have control over. What we do have control over is do we or do we not want to allow dispensaries or lounges in the village of Rhinebeck? And there's a process associated with doing that. Um, so this little white paper kind of was meant to summarize that information. If you've had a chance to read it, um, you know, please do take your time and, and go over that. Uh, in terms of what we can do as the village of Rhinebeck and what we're allowed to do under the current law as given by the state of New York. So there are some deadlines associated with this, you know, and it nets down into either you opt in or we opt out, right? If we opt in, right, there's basically nothing we have to do because the state has made the law very simple for municipalities to opt in. They've made it harder if you want to opt in out. And if you want to opt out, you can opt out of either dispensaries and or lounges or both, depending on what we want to do. So our goal was to get community input before we as a board work towards establishing a plan or a resolution or whatever we want to do. Along with that, we are going to be releasing a survey tomorrow. We're going to talk about it at the board tonight, um, but the survey is a very simple question. Do you want A or do you want B, et cetera. Um, so that will go out. It's not going to go out via snail mail, though. It's going to go out through our normal distribution, which is email, Facebook page, and, our web, and, our, and on our website. And we'll be taking input on our survey through the end of August. Because right? what we want to do is come back with a plan at our September meeting and try to move this thing forward because of the December 31st deadline that we have if we want to opt out of any of this. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. I'm going to ask you if you have a question or if you have a statement, you know, please come up to the podium, address, you know, introduce yourself, and please limit your comments to three minutes. If somebody has already expressed exactly what you feel, you can say, ditto, I would appreciate. You know, um, but again, try to keep your comments so we can have enough time to get through to everybody. We would like to convene this meeting at six o'clock and start our regular board meeting. I'm going to open it up to questions. Come up and speak. Come up here so everybody could hear you, and that way, Panda's here, and we can they can pick you up on the audio. Thank you. Just, just looking at this. Can I help her? Grant, can you throw the switch on that for me, please? at this very quickly, my understanding is that um, municipalities that opt out are not entitled to the revenue 
that um, opting in entitles us to. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay. And so I'll, I'll take it one step further for those who haven't read it. The only revenue we get is sales tax. So sales tax is the state is taxing the sale of marijuana at 13%. At that 13%, the state keep the state gets all 13%, but they keep 9%. They send 4% back to the county. The county keeps 1%, and the remaining 75% gets sent to those areas that have dispensaries, right? Not lounges. Get sell the product that have dispensaries. For instance, if the town of Rhinebeck was to have a dispensary and the village was to have a dispensary, then we have to come to some mutual agreement on how we're going to split those that monies. Okay? Does that help? Yes. Martha, come on up. I think it's important to point out in terms of the process that if we opt out, we can always opt in later if we see how things are going in the area, in the state, et cetera. But if we opt in before December 31st, we can never opt out. That's so correct. I think that's a very key point in terms of making decisions at this point in the process. So I would emphasize that uh, to anyone who is concerned about the issue or has any questions. So Martha, could you just give your name so we can record? Of course. I wanted to follow up on that quickly. Um, there is some concern is the wrong word, but awareness that the revenue opportunities are probably only really going to be valuable within the first few years. So there's that. Because as more communities open up dispensaries, the money that's being spent on it distributes. So, you know, Great Barrington in Massachusetts currently has three or four dispensaries. They're very concerned about the fact that New York just passed this law because all of the New Yorkers who go to Great Barrington are going to stay in New York. So they're about to lose a lot of revenue as a result. So, like, you know, that's part of the math. So, so Rich, Rich, if you want to say something, come on up, please. Right, yeah, so, it's, so it's impossible to know what the math is. Right. So if the sales increase, the revenue increases, okay? And, and my concern is not necessarily the money flow, because it, it doesn't seem to going to be about 25,000, maybe a million. Maybe 25,000 for a million comes down to, from the county. My concern more is the impact on the community, the elements that will come in here. My grandkids are walking into the village every day in the summer. Probably ain't going to happen that much anymore. Uh, and as the woman said earlier, if we opt that now, we can always go back and sign up later on. Uh, th this hasn't been tried yet in New York State. They've done it in Colorado, California, a few other places. Some places like Colorado Rocky, California seems well, California was for the last 20 years high anyway, so. And you said Barrington, I guess, has been doing it for a while with a few dispensaries. Uh, I would, I would like to have everybody really take the time to consider what impact on the community it will bring, the elements of people it brings up here uh, into the community for the purpose of buying pot. Uh, as they buy it or use it in the lounge and go out into the streets, it affects people differently. You'll have people that will uh, be happy as a lark and you'll have people that will get nasty. And we're the ones that are going to have to deal with them, not the state government. Donna. I, I just want to ditto what Martha said too. I strongly favor opting out, um, possibly for permanently, but at least um, taking that conservative route to see what happens elsewhere. The revenue, I agree with this gentleman that the revenue is not the issue here. I do think there's a detail I read that um, any revenue that comes back to, if it were only in the village, the revenue would still be split with the town. So you're, you're talking about a diminishing revenue stream. <clears throat> That's it, all. I, the way I inter interpret it is if the village and the town both have dispensaries. 
if the town does not have a dispensary, it stays all in the village. Uh, that's my interpretation. Fact check. Somebody should fact check yeah. that. Um, I'm not sure either, but I, I, when I was, I was following the revenue stream, and it seemed to, in fact, it, I'm of no, it, it's of no interest to me. I'd rather pay more income, uh, property tax than worry about a small revenue stream from a pot shop in town. Uh, my concern is uh, right now there's a great deal of intensity in the village with um, uh, traffic, pedestrians, all of this. I mean, I, I'm very concerned about the future in terms of how much traffic we can bear in Massachusetts because <coughs> there are limited numbers of um, outlets, of course. It was a disaster <laughs> when they first opened in terms of the lines and lines and lines of traffic uh, to come in and uh, purchase. So. That, you know, there's a lot to consider, but opting out is at least a, a sort of a, a safe interim measure, a good interim measure to see how it works. And the gentleman behind, come on up. Hello, I'm Marcus Goldberg. Um, just to rebuttal that, um, what would happen if we do not um, if we opt out. Um, as I'm sure we all know, many, many people use cannabis across this country, legally or illicitly, and um, we can't stop that. That's gonna be happening regardless. So, uh, if residents of Rhinebeck, um, visitors, people coming to Rhinebeck, they're gonna be using cannabis regardless. I don't think the laws at this point or having a dispensary or not having a dispensary is really going to have any effect. The bottom line is people are going to use cannabis regardless. So the question is, do we want to profit from that as a village? And I'll, I will stop there. Hi, Joe. I'm Joe Kurthoys. Uh, my biggest uh, concern is is that this uh, group of people here is very concerned, and they're here right now because of their concerns. But my proposal is is to put a vote out for the village and for the town because that's how we can protect ourselves. Because if we feel one way about it and the majority of the village or the majority of the town feels a different way, we can just cover ourselves by having a, a vote to see what would be uh, the proper way that would have a majority. Uh, the young gentleman that just spoke, uh, I'm pretty sure he's right on it. Uh, I went to college. Uh, that was the first time I ever smoked pot. Um, I haven't smoked pot in over 27 years, but I do have dear friends that have hurt themselves, uh, New York State police officers, and they've been on anti-inflammatory for over a year, and their doctor said to them, you know, you have three young children, um, I'm gonna give you a medical marijuana card. This was before New York State legalized it. And this gentleman was waking up at night having to hold his wrist and shaking his arm because he had no feeling in his hand. And he said after a week of taking tinctures, which is like a fluid that comes in an eyedropper, he didn't have those problems. Um, he, it's pain management. And I'm pretty sure the Tylenol Corporation, the Advil Corporation, and the Buff Buffering Corporation don't care about you losing your kidneys or your liver because they're making money off of this. We're just all pawns. You know, I don't understand medicine. I'm not a doctor. But I do know this guy is a great man. He was a state police officer. And I said to him, what do your friends say to you when you're showing the medical marijuana card? They said, we can't wait till we retire. You know, so I look at it as it's the people's choice 
you know, I appreciate everything that the board does for us. Every stinking week, you guys are working all the time, and you're not making any money off of it. So now let's talk about money, okay? Revenue. Rhinebeck is busy because we have no parking. Maybe if revenue is generated, maybe it will diminish, but revenue is revenue. And far as I'm concerned, uh, the inflationary rate goes between one and a half and five percent per annum. So if you're on a fixed income, pretty soon after a while, if you don't have revenue coming in and keeping up with the inflationary rate, we're going to be in trouble. And I don't know much about the uh, budget, but I can tell you, uh, we haven't had a parking lot, and I've been paying in the in lieu of fee of parking since the 80s. And I haven't seen a parking lot come yet. And growth is good. I would like to keep it the same. Uh, I would love to go home to my mom and my dad and go to my bedroom where my Brooks Robinson baseball was in the top dresser drawer from an IBM event. I would love to keep things the same, but we have to grow. And, you know, I don't think uh, cannabis as, is as severe as uh, other drugs that are being used by people. So I may be wrong, but I'm just asking that people try and understand to step on the other side when you are having pain management. You know? That's it. Okay. Go up on the yes. So, Rich, yeah, Rich, let's let's well, if you want, let's get through the questions, and you can come back up. Are we? Are you t timing them? Thank you very much. Paul, appreciate. It. I like the Brooks Robinson reference. <laughs> I do have somebody who isn't able to speak is sitting right here, so I just want to read in what she just wrote to me. Um, I'm speaking impaired, so please share. I spend 650 to 850 a month in Great Barrington. My friends spend the same, less or more, and that's 10 of us. There are probably more, many more in Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck should have that money. Also, most will not want it, but those who smoke will still do it here. Debbie. Yeah, Bill's been trying to... I was going to get to him. Yeah. Okay. Just... Hi, Bill. Hi. Hi, Diane. Uh, it's great that you had this meeting. Uh, I don't want to repeat what Joe said, but I'm not a medical doctor. I was a salesman by trade. I've been here 49 years. And I do have several concerns. I did work in the assessor's office, and I know what the recent reval we had, the, vet, the village, and the town have increased their revenue. We all know that. We also have a very vibrant business district that thanks to the recovery from the China virus, we, I'm sure, we're doing very well. Uh, and I think money is really not a key element here because the sales tax that's generated in this village and town from car dealers, and restaurants compared to 30 or 40 years ago is astronomical. But I want to, I'm more concerned as a father of five uh, on the youth. It is mind-altering compound. THC is stronger, uh, up to about 400% over the last 20 years. And what is the effect on our youth? I'm 80 years old. My days, you know, I'm on bonus time. but. I'm concerned about the youth, also the lung and breathing problems that occur by users. And there's another one that people don't talk about. There are pregnancy implications as well. <laughs> Babies have sometimes they have emotional problems, behavioral problems, ability to pay attention, and they and they also in their formation. I'm not a doctor, but. They, March of Dimes came out in the 1970s, and they warned about drug use. Marijuana is a drug, and by many people, it's an entry drug. We have a beautiful village here. The reason I moved here 49 years ago, it's, it's advanced very nicely. 
Improvements have been made. The last thing we need in this village is a marijuana lounge. What we need, like Joe said, maybe some parking. I want to give you an idea. And uh, it has nothing to do. Go up to Cooperstown, a beautiful village upstate New York. It is larger than Rhinebeck, has the Hall of Fame, baseball, the Farmers Museum. But they do something very creative in the summertime. They run a trolley bus. And you know where the people park? Out in the school parking lots in the perimeter of the village. It's just an idea. You could contract a transportation company, particularly in the summer months, when business is gratefully very busy, as we all know on the weekends especially, and even during the week. We have many visitors here, and that's just another thing that you might consider. But I am concerned about marijuana. Go on some websites and look at some research labs. And I'm going to close with an accident that happened a few weeks ago. I'm not going to name any names, but one of our deputy sheriffs was driving down the road, and he got T-boned by a car who ran the stop line. Okay. He had to, he wasn't severely injured, neither was his canine dog. And he called for assistance, other deputy sheriffs. And this is what really gets me. They gave that, those three boys, the car reeked of marijuana, reeked. They gave, they actually had to give the marijuana back to the three youths. And the only charge was. Okay, I'll close with that. Police work, Mayor, you're the police chief. Consider that. Paul, you haven't been up. Paul Deercorn, I live on East Market Street. I've only got a couple of questions. You've mentioned a number of times a dispensary. I take it that it can be more than one dispensary per community. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, I, I would assume so. I based assume on many what our zoning, I, we have to get into zoning regulations if we were to do this. And I don't know how that would all play out in terms of allowable numbers maybe or something just like we regulated short term vacation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But permits are given by the state of New York, not by us. Okay, I would assume the zoning would zone it somewhat similar to the zoning of uh, bars and, and... It is. It's, it's analogous to the liquor. Yeah, and I, that's why I think the zoning would probably be analogous to the selling of liquor as well. Another concern I have is traffic and the police. Are the police going to have additional training or do they need additional training to deal with stone drivers or stone pedestrians? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, but those are a couple of my concerns. We have increased traffic of, around of people who are not all together and people walking the streets that may be obnoxious or whatever. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to dive too deep into the reefer madness aspect of this. Um, I'm sure at least all of us on some level understand um, the kind of uh, miscommunications almost between kind of society that um, some people may think the seem that cannabis is a gateway drug and hurts people and is very dangerous. But why aren't we talking about alcohol? Why aren't we talking about prescription pills? We're labeling cannabis that has never even caused an overdose in this war world. It can't. It's a completely natural substance. And we're getting upset that, okay, so cannabis does not get sold in Rhinebeck. We say opt out. What that might lead to is people are still using the cannabis. Where is that cannabis coming from? It's obviously coming from black market illicit sources. God knows from who from. And contains God knows what. It can contain fentanyl, it contain chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals. So when you say you're worried about your children, about cannabis, are you worried about them using cannabis? Or are you worried about them potentially getting a harmful fake cannabis product that can make them die on the spot? 
Would you rather them go to a dispensary where they can get clean, lab-tested cannabis products? Or would you rather your kids buy from the black market, from illicit distributors that don't care about anyone but money, and they sell their product with God knows what in it, loads of chemicals, because they're obviously looking to make lots of money. I bet we care about the hey guys. So wait, Rich, Rich, you can have your chance. Rich, 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 well, you can. I'm, I think of this. I'll, I'll be, I'll Rich, if you want to comment, you can get up and comment, Rich. And, I mean, I say, I think it's important to realize that the analogy here is really, um, at least for the um, dispensaries, would be a liquor store. That I think you have to be over 21 to go in there. There's all kinds of limits. So the idea that somebody from high school is going to walk down the street and be able to purchase anything from the dispensary, that's not, it's not a candy store. It's more analogous to a liquor store, Just for clarification. Well, here, Carnegie, then I haven't read the state law. I, I probably should have, but uh, is there any prohibition to growing it myself? No. No, you can. You can. Under state prohibition. law, you can grow it. I can grow it, so I can grow it in the village. Yep. Does the village have any uh, ability to limit that? Not by no. so state, state law. law. Okay, I can grow it, and I, can I use it also? Yes. Whatever I grow? Yes. Can I sell it in my yard sale? I think I think no. you're you're allowed. Um, just for clarification, I believe you're allowed two plants, and they have to be. Uh, they can't be some place where other people can get to them. I think they're supposed to be sort of grown dis just two plants discreetly. That's no, my actually, understanding. More, you can you can have you can have mature plants and young plants and a combination okay. thereof, and you can grow them for your own use, for family and friends. And, and people are. Yeah, Donna. Um, a question. <laughs> nice um, Come on up, Donna, so we can pick you up on the mic. Could you just explain the part about going to a, putting it on a ballot for a public vote? Is that there was a sequence of steps? I I forgot where that fits in the sequence. If we opted out or opted in, what is what gets us to the uh, public vote? Opting out. Opting, opting out. out of either or both gets you to a permissive referendum. Okay, and so that would be this November. We we can mm. we can send it to a permissive referendum, Donna, as a board. We can send it to a permissive referendum. You can or, as a board. We can, or yeah. we can send in the the public can spring one with I think twenty percent of the voters signing a petition, something like that. That many? Okay. Isn't it? I think it's ten. Um, no, I think it's there 10. Diff there are different rules. 10 in different, yeah, cities, maybe. I think it's, I think it, it's is, it is likely that the board would send it to a referendum. Uh, okay, so with that, we don't have to start the uh, petitions. Well, um, we haven't but, decided. But we have not decided. <laughs> but, no, you have not decided. Yeah. <laughs> but can you also just mention what the timing is, given that you're here today or we're here with a public hearing? What would be the next steps? I would, I, I'm going to voice an opinion on that. My own sentiment, and we've had a couple of emails about it because of the short length of time between now and December 31st. I would like to get the survey out that Vanessa has developed for us, collect those results at our September meeting, make a decision about setting a public hearing based on a resolution. And then that's res that public hearing has to be like 30 days out, you know, in terms of getting the information out and, and getting people educated on when that is. So I want to allow enough time before we go into a public hearing. And then we hold a public hearing. And we can hold as many public hearings as we want till we get to a point where the board then makes a decision. The board's decision is yes or no, is up in or out, or the board decision is to have, have the vote? The board, if we opt out, then, as Brandt has suggested, we could send it to a permissive referendum. Oh, you could or have to? We well, could. We can, or it can be a citizen organized. And we can, op we can split dispensaries and lounges also to make it even more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so there is, we just launched a survey. We want to close that. It's live now. Um, you can find it on the website. We'll even put up maybe a little bit more of an eye caching blurb right on the home page. With that survey, we want to close it on August 31st. That's not even that much time. So please spread the word. That's just to get a pulse check on the wider community. 
you know, it's, it's not a vote, it's just a survey. But that's one step that we're trying to do to reach more people. Martha. Just a little clarity here from you. Um, you were talking about holding Martha Gershon with Lorraine Drive, uh, holding various hearings. My understanding is this December 31st deadline is very firm. And if the, if the, I think it's critical that the board decide what it's going to do and then adopt whatever it's going to adopt <coughs> in good time so that if the decision is to opt out, there is a legal, acceptable, uh, appropriate process that gives us good time before December 31st to have that referendum because right. that is right. required. Yeah. under the law yeah. right. if, if we opt out. And I, I want to reiterate um, what I said before, that if we opt out, that is not the last word necessarily. I mean, any old time, next year, the year after, five years from now, it's possible for the village to opt in if things seem to be appropriate. But if we opt in, that's the end of the story. So I, I do think that the, uh, um, what shall I say, the conservative, the thoughtful approach by the village board would be to opt out because then it's possible to gather information, see what's going on elsewhere, and um, assuming, of course, that the permissive referendum uh, supports that. Uh, I think it's important to be to be careful on this issue because there's it's very the uh, people's mm -hmm. concerns are very intense are uh, very serious so I would urge the board to be to take a very careful look at this and make sure that we are in good time uh, within the appropriate uh, state required timetable thank you since there's a lot of questions on the referendum here's an article from Nikon which is New York conference <coughs> of mayors uh, that publishes a lot of information that's helpful to us. And there is a brief article in there on the referendum. And I'll just read a couple of captions. Within 10 days after the Board of Trustees adopts any local law or resolution that is subject to a permissive referendum, the village clerk must post and publish in the same manner as provided a general note of election, right? A notice setting forth the date that the local law or resolution was adopted goes on to say, but for a vote to be held on a local law or resolution that is subject to a permissive referendum, a valid petition must be filed in the office of the village clerk within 30 days of the passage of the Legislation Act. If no petition is filed within 30 days, the local law or resolution goes into effect by operation of law. The petition must be signed by a number of village electors equal to at least Grant was right, 20% of the electors of the village, as shown on the register of electors. If an act is subject to a permissive referendum, the board of trustees may, upon its own motion, submit the act to a referendum eliminating the need for a petition. Okay? So we have to notice a public hearing. If we did this tomorrow, we'd have to give 10, day, 10 days to notice a public hearing and then have the local law on the opt-out, and then 10 days after that, the permissive referendum period would start it, and then 30 days after that. Yeah. So that's 50 days. I know. That's why we're getting started now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I've been telling everybody no, we I know. need to saying. start. <laughs> Believe me, I've been pushing to get this going because I want your input, and I want to get it in a timely fashion, and I want to spend the time on this, I think, poorly executed law by the New York State on how we can react to it. So that I am pushing to get information out and get feedback. Joe. Oh, sorry, Joe. Hang on. Ladies, Paul. Ladies, sir. I just have a question. To what, ex Paul, to what extent does your consideration of this and your decision on this affected by what the town will do? And are you aware of it? To, to what extent? To what extent? Hmm. Do you want to answer that? You better be. <laughs> and you want, you're aware of the fact that the town has set a public hearing? They, I went to their meeting. I went to their town meeting last night. Uh, nobody showed. Uh, 
No, yeah, but let me just, I just want to say, nobody showed up at their meeting. They adopted an acceptive resolution last night and set a public hearing for September 1st. Mm -hmm. to, public hearing to opt out. They, they passed it. As supported by the Kingston Freeman, which is a step up from the journal, but. They, they, they support, they accepted resolutions to opt out of dispensaries and to opt out of lounges. Subject, they they don't have the same right that we do. They have to go to a citizen-run referendum, where we as a board can can supersede oh, really? that. Yeah. So to my question, I had no idea what they're doing. That's my answer. That was, <laughs> no, you, my question was: to what extent, if any, is your decision making? affected by what the town does that's all just yeah well no that's i'm just saying as a trustee i'm not really tuned into what they're doing so paul to answer your question I'm, I'm 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 aware of what they're doing it's not having a great deal of impact on what i think we should do because ultimately we're not the ones who choose like the state gives out permits and those permits are location based and so if both the village and the town say yes that doesn't guarantee that there's going to be both a dispensary in both the village and the town because we're not the ones in charge of permits. So I'm frankly like, you know, great. The town is choosing to opt out at least at this particular moment, but it doesn't have an, any impact on how I'm thinking about this. Thank you. Although the results of their referendum might have a way of, might help me think about it because obviously the people who live in the town also live in the village. Do we get a permit? I guess we get to vote in it too, don't we? We get to vote in it. Way back in the corner there. Come on up. Hi, my name is Christina Boland. I've lived here for 20 years plus and raised three children. And I had no intention of speaking here tonight. And I am ignorant to this complete issue. I'm just starting to get information. But as a professional nurse for over 30 years and caring in the community for many of you and your family members, children, grandchildren, and raising children, I just wanted to quickly just respond as a citizen to some of the comments I've heard regarding the issue. Um, the, the crowd this would draw, the fear of the uh, component of the marijuana, of you know people coming under desirable situations. Um, these dispensaries are so expensive. Like they're really very expensive and the kids and um, other people really don't frequent them, um, it's a different situation. Unfortunately, your children are going to remain to go to Poughkeepsie and Kingston and buy bad marijuana and, and drugs, and we do need to address that. It's a huge, horrible issue that we need to stop. But um, I really don't personally see the association with it. Um, and as far as marijuana use, um, you know, I, I'm against it personally, but I, ha I respect others' rights for it and have seen great health um, impacts and good things for medical marijuana and that said just to close the you know i think it's the hypocrisy of the alcohol abuse in our bars in this village there's been violence there's been bodily injury um, with the over abuse of alcohol in our town drunk driving and that's much much worse in my opinion than the use of medical marijuana for me personally it would be more of a, a traffic impact um, things like that so yeah that's, I just wanted to have that input. Thank you. Thank you, Rizzi. Come on up, Linda. <laughs> uh, I just want to make this very short and simple. I did your, Donna, say your name for oh, the Oh, I'm sorry, public. Linda Christensen. Um, I did a, what Donna said and what Martha said. I think the conservative view is the way we should go and see how it goes, see if the town opts in. I don't think we need to draw that many more people into town. We're pretty busy now. It's hard to move around on weekends. I don't think we need to bring another attraction in if we could have it nearby for anyone that wants to partake and not have to deal with it in the village. At least for now. <laughs> Joe. I just want 10 three-minute times. 
There you go. Here, have the seat. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I would like to also interject. I, I play in a over 48 soccer, and one of my buddies retired, and he has a permit to uh, take the marijuana that's grown hydroponically in Massachusetts, and he makes the edibles from it. And I said, well, what's that all about? He said, the marijuana that people buy that's not hydronically or hy hydroponically controlled can grow a fungus, which is what the uh, young lady just spoke about. Uh, that, that can cause terrible things. But the marijuana with the edibles has nothing to do with the inhalation of uh, smoke and won't do the lung damage. I'm just talking about uh, a medical relief from pain from the gummies, the chocolates, and the tinctures. That, that's what I feel is a benefit to it. I personally, my mom died of lung cancer. I would never smoke marijuana ever, but I don't want to take ibuprofen, uh, especially when I play soccer. I don't want to take that stuff. I know guys that have been taking that stuff so much that the doctors have said, what, what, what are you doing taking that much? Two or three after every time you play? And it, it's just terrible for you. So. I don't think people are going to be walking down the street smoking a marijuana cigarette. I think people that need a dispensary is for their health to stop the inflammatory problems that they're having and arthritis and stuff like that. So I, I think there's a, you know, a, a bit of confusion. I, I remember my grandmother telling me that uh, you don't go to that Jack Russo's, which is now the Terrapin. And I said, well, yeah, I do, Nan. She goes, well, they sell cocaine there. And she only drove to the church, the Catholic church, and Kilmer's where CVS is. So she even knew stuff like that. And yes, people are going to use it because it's legal in New York. But I think if we have a control over it where it's not having a fungus in it, I do know a family that had a business here for many years, and the business is still operating, and their grandson was up in Red Hook years ago with another lad and some girl from a prestigious family and there was fentanyl in it and she smoked it and they said oh I, we can't help her we have to straighten up first and they were giving her cpr my friend that was a, a, a state police officer he remembered that and he said they tried to give her cpr so they brought her to the hospital when they straightened out and she was dead so Problems will occur, yes, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think marijuana is something that, you know, Paul, I would buy it from you, but I'd have to give it to my friend to make uh, an edible out of it. But it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be something with uh, a fungus in it, you know? It's, it, it, it has to be, well, it's like the liquor authority. These guys, my buddy, he said, they're very strict. They're in the dispensary. They have the dispensary, they have the growing, and then they have the manufacturing, all in the same property. And, and they're inspected all the time. Three minutes is up. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. May, may I just give me a minute? Just a minute. I just wanted to close with a comment. I work part time for John DeFile, public school transportation, preferably for children with special needs. Once a year, I get a random call from John DeFile to go to Dr. Abbas's office for a test. He tests my eyes, he tests my heart, and guess what, he gives me a urine test. What for? That little product called marijuana. Now, I'm driving children to school and to home. If I have a trace of marijuana, I'm immediately suspended. My CDL is suspended. Just want to give you that one little thought. Thank you. And it stays in you 30 days. That's correct. And to drive a forklift, yes. when you slumber, you have to get a, a test. So I thought you had a And Lowe's yeah. as well. I got a boy from Lowe's many years ago. They could not give you an offer until you went to a special center. Emergency one, something like that, and they tested you for marijuana. Whether you were a cashier, salesman, forklift driver, you were tested. 
Why is that? Oh, let me go up to you. I'm sure. Hi, I'm Jim Saxon, uh, re resident. Uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify uh, my understanding. If, it doesn't sound like this is going to happen, but if the board did nothing, you, the, we would automatically be opted in. Correct. Okay. So New York State has decided that the default position is to be uh, opted in. And, uh, and if we opted out, well, if, if you didn't do anything, we opted in, there still is no uh, guarantee or procedure or uh, knowledge that a permit would be granted in the village or for that matter in the town or in Dutch Red County. or Hyde Park <laughs> or anywhere near here. We don't know that. We don't control so it. So it's up to the state. So all we're talking about here is controlling our little area here when all around us could it could potentially have all these, uh, 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 have this uh, opportunity, I would call it. So um, I just wanted to be, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, every municipality in the state of New York has to go through this process. Well, or if you don't do it, you're right. automatically yeah. opted in. Right. So if the board is right. asleep or something, you just, okay. Bernstein again. Um, I, I have seen the benefits, the health benefits of marijuana on people who are extremely ill um, with various things and in a great deal of pain and end of life pain also. And um, it's, it's been very, very helpful to people who are suffering a great deal. And I think that, I think that it's really worth considering um, there are many ways, I mean, I wouldn't want to see a lounge or a dispensary right on East Market Street. There's got to be some place to the side or somewhere, but I, I do think that this is just an opportunity to offer residents some more help in health, in terms of their health and their comfort. Um, once again, I'm going to keep this pretty brief, but um, I just wanted to let everyone know if they are not aware of the New York Medical Marijuana Program, which we've had in the state for around seven years now, um, is generally considered a full-blown failure amongst New Yorkers. Um, quite frankly, it's not really usable by New Yorkers. It's the prices, I mean, they're just not remotely realistic for most New York families unless you are, you know, have a lot of money, quite honestly. So um, medical marijuana is, a, I think, um, a lot of people can agree is a good thing for society. And New York doesn't even have that down yet. It's been seven years. We're talking about adult use cannabis now. We haven't even got medical cannabis down yet. So let's just keep that in mind that this is going to be a very, very long process and um, seven years. Seven years that the medical marijuana program has been up and operating and not much has changed. Um, let's see, they added ground flour in the past seven years. Um, they stopped removing chemicals from the cartridges. Yeah, uh, yeah, so we do not have a working or a comprehensive medical marijuana program. And I think that's actually more important at this moment than adult use because it's going to be a long time. Let me just read another quick statement out of the article from NICOM in reference to New York State and how long. Because even they say it's going to be 20, late 2022, 23 until this really gets flushed out. You know, and so why we're pushing this for December 31st drives me crazy. but. That's what their plan is. But they say they need to establish two state agencies. One would be called the New York State Cannabis Control Board and the Office of Cannabis Management, which will administer the state's adult use and medical pro programs, promulgating the rules, issuing licenses, investigating and enforcing infractions of the law. And those two agencies 
don't exist yet to this did day. You put, the license is built a crime with citizens that can afford the license, the background check, whatever it takes. It's not a license to the village, it's a license to Ralph to open up the cannabis dispensary. Yes. Right? The village isn't going to open it. No. No, it's right. a private right. citizen that has enough money to put up the bond. Or a company pay. of some kind. Well, okay. Yeah. Or, and the bond and the X amount of dollars to open the store. He's going to sell that product at whatever he can to make his money back quickly. And they'll tax that 13%. So it, it's not necessarily a cheaper way to go. It's an easier way to go than get a medical marijuana card. Walk in and get it. But, but it's a privately owned industry once it gets cranked. Yeah, like it's like a liquor store. Yeah, like liquor store. Hi, uh, my name is Amy Hass, and um, I have, you know, I've had a lot of problems, um, met, uh, met, you know, uh, physical rheumatoid arthritis for years, and um, I've tried everything around. Uh, and the only thing that gives me any type of pain relief is topical THC slash CBD. The CBD that they sell all over doesn't work because the medicinal um, benefit is not released unless it's mixed with THC. And it took me years to figure out which combination worked for me, in what form, and where to get it. Where to get it, I beg, I borrow anybody going out of state to Maine, Colorado, Washington, any place out of New York City. When they legalized New York City for medical marijuana, I went to my doctor, I was downstate then, and they wouldn't give me a prescription because their insurance didn't cover it. So that's out of it. So I had to go to these ridiculous measures to get, just to put me out of, to get me a good night's sleep. So I wake up, after, if I do fall asleep, I wake up after two hours in excruciating pain. But if I put, have this marijuana uh, gel or cream, I can sleep maybe four to five hours at a shop. But it's the only thing that ever helped. They give you Topicin, they give you, I can't take the ibuprofen or any type of that anymore because my whole system closes down from it. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is the availability, I agree with Dale was saying, the availability of um, uh, being able to fill a prescription here and my doctor up here will give me a prescription. But then I have to travel to Great Barrington to fill it to get it, and I wait online, it's a whole day affair. So getting some availability would really help. Um, I think policing, it's just like any other type of drugs where you don't want somebody to abuse it. You know, that's in another area. I, I can't talk about what you would do for punishment if people abuse it. You put them into a, a, a self-help program, you know, a rehab program if they abuse it. but. What are you going to do? How, how do you reach these individuals who really need the relief from it? Jeff, come on up. My name is Jeff Christensen. So we've heard a lot of, a lot of opinions about different aspects of what's going on here especially the last few speaking about medical marijuana. We've heard some people say that it's important to have medical marijuana, which I agree with. Uh, the woman that just came up now said uh, she has to spend an entire day currently going up to Great Barrington and waiting in line to get her marijuana. Now they've been selling it there for, well, I don't know, two years? Anybody that's been up there and has seen the dispensary that they sell it in. It was a madhouse. And you have to wait in line still. It still is. I'm not objecting to medical marijuana. I think it's an important thing, despite the gentleman here saying it's been a failure. I think it's not been a failure. I think it benefits a lot of people. But let's ask ourselves a question. As the mayor pointed out, every municipality in New York 
must go through this process. The issue is not, in New York State, should the village of Rhinebeck have a marijuana dispensary or not. We're answering the question just for our community. We know that it's caused a lot of traffic problems. I could be wrong, but I think that if we had a dispensary here, we're going to see an enormous spike in traffic and parking issues related to people going to that dispensary. But let's be honest. There's going to be dispensaries nearby. <laughs> there are going to be many towns, minutes drive from here, not an hour's drive from here, but minutes drive from here, that are going to opt in. They're going to have dispensaries. And we will have the opportunity, if we opt out now, as has been pointed out, to watch the progress and the experience of other communities, to see how it goes with them, and be able to say, thank God we didn't let that happen here, or, yeah, that wasn't so bad, let's do it here. We have that opportunity if we opt out. The other thing is, we've heard people say, well, we need the money. We don't have any idea how much revenue would come in. Is it going to lower our taxes a dollar a year? Or 10 dollars? No one knows. right? So in brief, I think there's been a lot of intelligent discussion. I'm not opposed to marijuana. I don't think that we have to have, as a public service, a dispensary here to prevent young people and people that cannot afford the expensive stuff from going to the black market. Having a dispensary here or anywhere will not eliminate the black market for pot. It's not going to put an end to that. There will always be that risk. So my opinion is, and I would state this to the board, I, I would prefer that we opt out and really watch what happens with any of the surrounding communities that will surely be opting in and then make a decide, decision to opt in later if it benefits the community. Couple more minutes. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You can have the last three minutes. <laughs> First of all, I just wanted to recognize how depressing it is to listen to um, a fellow medical marijuana patient just have to admit that she had to cross state lines with cannabis, which is a federal offense. And it's, it's very depressing that patients have to go, and go to that level because their own state government can't take care of them. And um, that kind of brings me to another um, topic that is going more into the future about New York's um, adult use and medical cannabis as a whole. Um, <laughs> You know, I think I've, I uh, was born and raised in Rhinebeck. I always saw Rhinebeck as a place that's, you know, local products, it's, lo you know, all local. And that was kind of, that's kind of something I've always just loved about Rhinebeck. If we're going to open a dispensary that's just really just having a, a giant corporate cannabis corporation in somewhere in New York just ship their stuff to a small little store and make it look, you know, quaint and small and, you know, local, but in reality that the products are actually grown in, you know, Rensselaer County or God no, you know, Long Island. It could be anywhere. Well, well no, in state, in state. In state. But um, I think it's really important to remember that we should, you know, Dutchess County, we should keep it local, you know? We shouldn't just be, you know, getting involved with these corporations. There's so, it's, cannabis is not, it's, it's an industry. You know, it's, that's what it is. And we have to remember that. So I think it's really, really important to remember that local is always first, and we should give the local residents of Dutchess County, specifically Rhinebeck and the village of Rhinebeck, job opportunities, opportunities to produce that cannabis. You know, who's going to test that cannabis? Who's going to grow that cannabis? Who's going to run that op Who's going to run the um, dispensary? As it stands now, we have either the adult use license or the micro, the, um, the micro license as they call it, which is for social equity applicants and such. And that would allow for vertical a vertical integrated market, which in short would allow one small company to do every aspect of growing, <coughs> the, the selling as in the dispensary. They get to control the whole thing rather than just giving a license to a, um, 
a small, you know, a small, you know, it could be a family or just a, a small company that wants to open up a local. Um, I think your time is up here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I think it's extremely important, and I, I think I'm going to speak for myself, but probably the rest of the board would feel the same, that your input is extremely valuable to us. We want to continue this process. We have, want to have a very open process as we go through and, and share all the information. You're more than welcome to please stay for our village board meeting. I, I, we promise not to bore you to death. You know, but you know, if Maybe you're just you're, asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but this this will be the end this is the end of the workshop and we will start our village board meeting. Thanks a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.